What's up guys, it's Dalmatter here, and today we're going to be reacting to another P.F. Jung video. So this is why I can't call myself a Jordan Peterson fan anymore. Uh, so this is a year old, so it's obviously not about the Israel-Gaza situation, because I've seen a lot of people be upset with his take on that. Um, uh, I wonder, is this because of like the benzo addiction, or the crying, uh, other stuff like that? I'm not sure. Maybe the... The, the whole situation with, like, Michaela. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people that don't like that, but th there's a lot of things it could be. But anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Jordan Peterson getting kind of weird now. <laughs> Why is he retweeting men being milked like cows? Okay, I was thinking about how to do this video and I was thinking about what point I want to make and instead of making a point I just want to do explain my thought process and honestly share some stuff about me and my insecurities and who I am as a human okay because it is the case that I am actually I, I am an insecure person I care what other people think and even though it may not seem like it as I exude architectonic levels of just charisma <laughs> and charm and wit and just raw animal magnetism. Not, not as much as Nathan Robinson at Current Affairs. But one of the things <laughs> that I'm insecure about is the fact that I feel like it's very easy for people to stereotype me, to put me in a box, because I fit the mold of exactly the kind of person who would be interested in Jordan Peterson and the ideas he puts forward. I'm a white... I, I'm, I'm guessing it's somebody who is like conservative, but atheistic or like atheist adjacent. Because that's kind of the vibe that I got from, like, a lot of uh, Peterson fans, like, reading the comments on the videos when we first went viral. Is that it was a lot of people who would, like, you know, because uh, uh, there's so many things to, like, kind of talk about, right? You had the whole atheism movement on YouTube, and then, like, it kind of spread into, like, Atheism Plus, which was basically, like, a social justice brand of atheism, right? And then, obviously, Gamergate happened, and a lot of people weren't happy with that. And you had a lot of the, you know, like, kind of the civil war within the atheists, uh, and then, then it became kind of this thing where you had, like, the progressive atheists who were very much aligned with, like, all the progressive party politic type stuff, uh, right? Anything that the left says is, you know, basically they, the leftism is their new religion, um, even though they claim to be atheistic. I mean, I guess technically there's no God in that religion, so it is an atheistic religion. But um, the other side, you had the people who were maybe more culturally Christian but atheist. Uh, they saw certain values in religion even if they didn't believe in it i feel like those people kind of more fell towards like the peterson side i'm assuming that's what he is but i'm not sure grew up upper middle class male you know relatively emotionally crippled and like <laughs> to argue and debate and all that stuff it's like of course this guy is out making jordan peterson videos and look I specifically chose the niche that I'm in because it was just practical. It was an intersection of what kind of market there is and what I'm interested in. And if Jordan Peterson is the online college professor, then I am the online college TA trying to make his complicated ideas more digestible for people because I think they're valuable. But it is getting kind of difficult to call myself a Jordan Peterson fan because this man is tweeting, what the fuck is it? It's like porn fetishism that... Jordan Peterson just retweeted fetish porn some white guys with the Matrix filter over it because he thought it was a Chinese breeding facility. Oh, God. <laughs> he thinks it's CCP propaganda. He's also just calling women bitches, just straight up. It's not even funny. It's not even like in the context of a joke, right? At least Donald Trump, when he's saying things that are questionable, it's at least done kind of funny, you know, only Rosie O'Donnell. But this is just so basic and, un and, and uninteresting and childish on the part of Peterson. And it's such a sign of his own. tweeted uh, all, all this in nearly under a minute. There's now, uh, and that's how you sufficiently define a woman feminist. Take note: the ultimate objectification has now occurred under the rubric of tolerance and inclusion. The heavens have indeed turned to iron. It's not a vagina; it's a hole for another man to fuck. That's it. Uh, prison. Well, I want to know what the uh, age restricted for people under nineteen. I mean, honestly, like I don't even see this as a bad tweet. Like, he's mocking the, uh, like, the whole anything can be a woman idea. I don't understand how this is a, a bad tweet. Own incompetence that he is not willing to... I, I can't see what this, 
you know the age restricted thing is, but I, I, I really don't understand. Recognize how foolish he looks, how much it undermines all of the good stuff that he puts forward from a philosophical and scientific perspective. And I'm getting, it's kind of old to keep making the same video over and over again. So this is officially the last video probably, that I'm going to make regarding Jordan Peterson's Twitter habits because I am unofficially, unofficially no longer a fan. Like I said, I'm always going to be a Maps of Meaning super fan. And I will always be grateful for the help I received and I'll always be rooting for him. But I'm not telling anyone I'm a Jordan Peterson fan because it's, it's, it's kind of weird. And you might think, this is, this is my thing, there's an element of, well, I shouldn't care what other people think. But, you know, I did also willingly go in front of over 250,000 people to debate whether or not Jordan Peterson was a net positive. And at this point, if it was today, I don't know if I'd do that anymore because it's so easy to just ignore all of the incredible, fundamentally life-changing philosophical and scientific work that he has done, specifically as it relates to the metaphysics of order and chaos, the metaphysics of meaning, evolution, all of these things, all of that is out the window and replaced with man-milking fetish porn. It's just like, look, I am not gonna harp on the same points. He sucks on Twitter, we all can agree on that. The I, I agree on that, but I think that's more just because he's, I, I don't actually think he is a boomer. What year was he born? He's either a boomer or like older Gen X. I'm gonna, Jordan Peterson, 1962. So, okay, so I guess t technically he'd be older Gen X then, right? Like right at the start of Gen X. Uh, I, I think that's just old person using the internet, not understanding the internet. I think that's the problem there. Um, I, yeah, it is kind of cringy. I thought this was, honestly, I thought this was going to be more about, like, um, you know, him, like, the crying stuff of him, like, crying all the time, which I know uh, turns off a lot of people. Like, I, that's one of the things that I find the most uh, uh, kind of annoying about him. I do find it really weird when men cry. I think, I, like... Obviously, all men cry sometimes, but, like, he does it a lot, and I do find it, like, very weird. Um, the – so that was the thing. I think the benzo addiction was another thing that a lot of people find. That one I have a little more you – know, a little bit less caring of. Uh, you know, everyone has their issues when it comes to, you know, different addictions and stuff, uh, you know, whether it's, like, drugs or technology or whatever it is. So that one I care a, l a lot less about. The hypocrisy when it comes to his daughter, right? The way he talks about, like, you know, male-female relationships and stuff and then, like, what his daughter does. And obviously that's not entirely up to his control, right? You know, if she's a, a full-grown woman, she gets to make her own decisions. Um, but, you know, obviously a lot of people don't like that. Uh, and then the Israel-Gaza situation, a lot of people didn't like that. And that one I really don't care about. So for me, the big thing was the crying all the time. That one really kind of turned me off of, a lot of the stuff that he does. Uh, I, I Again, I'm still kind of in the same boat as this guy where I do think Peterson, you know, a lot of the intellectual stuff he does, right, when it comes to, like, philosophical discussions and when, it, when he talks about, like, religion as, like, an evolved mechanism, uh, I think a lot of that stuff is very good. But, yeah, like, a lot of the... I, I, I think the... His, his internet persona when it comes to, like, him on Twitter, I think that can just be chalked up to, like, old man uses internet. The thing that I want to say about me is that there was, and I, I feel like many people watching this might be in the same boat, especially if you came to this channel through all of the Jordan Peterson videos that I've done. It's very difficult to go along with criticism of your heroes, your intellectual heroes, when so much of that criticism is nonsense, right? There are an endless number of screeching, cringy children who unironically try and say that Jordan Peterson's philosophical work and scientific work is all quackery and all that. And it's hilarious. And I have searched far and wide for any... The thing about the quackery is, like, absolutely hilarious because... Even prior to becoming political or like, you know, politi like politically well known, I guess would be a better way to phrase it because he's always been political. Um, he was like a very, very frequently cited psychologist, right? Like this isn't a guy who just came out of nowhere in the, in the scientific realm uh, and became popular. Like he was already well known within his field. So, yeah, but when people say that he's a, uh, like a quack for his psychology stuff, that's just that's just political stuff. That's the same kind of thing where you see people who used to be like hardcore Elon fanboys and 
fucking suck Elon off about how he's the smartest man to ever live. And then he comes out as being right wing and then suddenly Elon's the dumbest motherfucker to ever exist. And how did this guy become the richest man of the planet? Right. That's just pol- be- somebody being like a complete fucking political hack when they when they criticize his uh, his, his, his work in academia. Anyone with even a room temperature IQ to try and make that case, and I am r- remain unconvinced, and I hear absolutely nothing but the spattering and spurgs of complete morons who have a dirty room. I'm obviously joking just to piss <laughs> off people so that they send me an email and come on, discuss and argue with me, because I genuinely am interested to hear people who disagree. But the point is, there comes a point in which it becomes necessary to criticize your heroes and intellectual heroes publicly to the point where you're not just going along with, you know, whatever he puts forward and trying to interpret it in the best possible light all the time because sometimes people are just wildly incompetent at points in their life. And I think Jordan Peterson, when it comes to Twitter, is wildly incompetent. Yeah. And so there is a part of me that is just... like, you know, kill the old self. I got... I think that is just old man... Like, again, I've said this, I think, three times in this video. I think that's just old man uses internet poorly, right? I think that's all it is an unending amount of help from listening to Jordan Peterson lectures online when I was at my lowest point. And I will forever be grateful and I will never be embarrassed as a straight white male who needed, uh, that I needed mental health help. But there is a fine line between not caring about what other people think and recognizing that as a public figure who's trying to communicate something, I don't know exactly, it's not helpful to be associated with someone who in the public arena is just undermining everything they are doing. And so I will continue and unendingly reference Maps of Meaning, reference Jordan Peterson's lectures and build out on his ideas. But at this point, if anyone asks if I'm a Jordan Peterson fan, I'll say, it depends on what you mean by fan. So anyway, (laughs) with that, to everyone watching, please share your thoughts if you've got any thoughts on this situation and this wonderful old man. Um, Otherwise, good luck and Godspeed. I'm honestly surprised that that was what it was about. I thought it was going to be, again, like, almost everyone that I've seen criticize, like, I have seen people criticize him about the Twitter stuff, but usually it's, you know, lefties, right? Um, Almost everyone I've seen from the right criticize him was about the crying all the time, which I agree with. I think that's kind of, it's definitely something that turns me off quite a bit. Um... The, the Benzo thing, the Michaela thing, or the Israel-Gaza thing. And I, w- I was expecting it to be one of those. I knew, well, I guess I, I knew it wouldn't be the Israel-Gaza thing because that was just so long ago. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly uh, kind of surprised that that was what it was. Because uh, for me, that's just like old man doesn't understand how to use internet properly. I, I, I can't really... I mean, 99% of old men are like that, right? You get the occasional person who understands, you know, how to use it. Usually they came up in the tech field, right? They, they were doing computer shit back when nobody knew what it was. So they understand it very well now. But yeah, I, I, it's not exactly what I expected the video to be. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.